Hi friends, today we'll talk about memories of a little girl. Paulina Nikolaeva was born in 1933, and at the beginning of World War II, she was about 8 years old. In her memories, she describes the horrors and new order of the fascist regime. At the beginning of the war, we left Minsk and settled in the village of Vizhary, in the Smilnovich village of the Rudinsky district. Many partisan families lived there. Zelnikov's partisan detachment operated in the surrounding forests. My mother kept in touch with him, received leaflets, and I, together with a friend, distributed them in the villages. One day, we gathered at the edge of the forest and began to play partisans. Suddenly the boy called Vitek comes running and says to me, Polia, run home! German soldiers took your mother away! I rushed to the village as far as I could. Mom wasn't at home. Grandma Gunner, who lived in the same house with us, said that the policeman came in a sleigh and took my mother away, and she had no idea why they took her. Where did they take her? I don't know, the old woman replied. They didn't say anything. My father was hanged by the Germans back in 1941. Then they took Raya's older sister and took her away, no one knows where. And now mom has been captured. I was left alone. What to do? I couldn't stand it any longer. I just sat down on a bench and sobbed. A few minutes later, I heard the snow crunching on the street. I looked out of the window. A sleigh, in which seven policemen were sitting, rolled up to the house. One of them, having seen me in the window, beckoned with his finger. I quickly wiped away my tears, got dressed and went out. Struggling to seem calm, I asked what they wanted of me. Sit down and let's go, the senior policeman ordered. Where? I asked. None of your business, he shouted menacingly. Wherever we take you, you will go there. I got into the sleigh. A sharp icy wind was blowing, but I didn't notice the cold. I was thinking about my mother. On the way, the policeman asked me about the partisans. I answered, as the squad leader taught me, that I had no idea whatsoever where they were. I was brought to Smilovici and locked in a room where my mother was already sitting. I was glad when I saw her. I wasn't scared at all, now that I was with her. Soon it got dark, and we lay down on the bunks. I couldn't sleep. My mom put her arms around my neck and was telling me how to behave and what to answer during the interrogation. You can answer all kind of questions, but when it comes to partisans, you didn't see or heard anything. They will beat you. Don't cry. Be silent. Prove that you're strong. I told my mom not to worry. Even though I was a child, I understood the situation. The next day we were interrogated. First my mother, then me. The Germans wanted me to tell them where the partisans were, their strength, armory, locations of their headquarters. I kept saying that I didn't know and had never been there. You're lying! The chief of the police shouted and whipped me. I clenched my teeth and was silent. It made him angry. Exactly like her mother, he hissed, and ordered the soldier to get me out. Then we were sent to Rudensk. The chief of the police said angrily, There, they'll find a way to deal with you. In Rudensk we were put in a cramped and dirty cell. In the evening they brought some frozen potatoes. We had a little snack and went to sleep on the floor. But I just couldn't fall asleep. It was cold in the cell. Cold air was coming in from under the floor and multiple rats were scurrying around. The chances are very small, my daughter, that we'll get out of here, my mom said and sighed heavily. But whatever it is, we must hold on to the end. Let the executioners know that we're not so easy to break. In the morning we were called for questioning. Again the same questions and the same answer. I don't know. I've never seen the partisans. Sazonov. A policeman who knew us before the war was present at the interrogation. When we returned to the cell, my mother said, Our Russian man and helps the Germans. Dirty dog. 
It's disgusting to look at him. Now we will not escape the gallows. He will definitely give us out. There was no hope of liberation. We began to wait for death. My mother kept saying, I wish it would all be over soon. The next morning, angry screams reached us from the adjoining cell. The wooden wall had cracks in it. Overcoming my fear, I peeped through one of them. What I saw made my body tremble. There were five people in the cell, a German officer, an interpreter, two guards. A young guy was standing in front of them. He had a terrible look, covered in blood, bruises under the eyes, rags instead of clothes. His disheveled hair fell over his forehead. There was a five-pointed star carved on the door behind him. Pointing to the star, the officer asked through the interpreter, Why did you do this? The young man was silent. Sir, said the interpreter, this scoundrel does not want to answer. Let's see if he's going to be that stubborn with a similar star on his back. The officer nodded to the soldiers. Like dogs, they jumped up to the young man and grabbed his hands. Then they brought him down onto the floor and began to carve a star on his shoulder. He was groaning. I got scared and turned away. When everything was quiet, I looked through the crack again. The young man, having gathered his last strength, raised himself on his hands and loudly, so that the prisoners in the neighboring cells could hear him, said, Farewell, comrades. I'm dying for the motherland. Avenge me. The guards grabbed him, dragged out into the yard and threw into a ditch that ran behind the barracks. At noon, screams were heard from another cell on the left. Through the crack I saw that an old woman, apparently in her eighties, was being interrogated. A German spoke in broken Russian. Fifteen minutes left. Will you answer? The old lady was silent, and again. There are ten minutes left. Will you answer? Silence. Five minutes left. And finally. One second left. Will you answer? And then instantly with fury. Take her. What happened next is hard to describe. The old lady's ears were cut off. Her eyes were gouged out. I couldn't look at it. I just heard the moans. Now dead, she was thrown into the ditch where the young man was already lying. Two days later, we were released. We couldn't believe our ears. We were waiting for death, and then they come and say, You can go home. We stood in a stupor for a few seconds, only when we were told to clear the cell, my mom hurriedly left, and I followed her. When we arrived at the detachment, we went to the commander. My mother told him about everything and began to scowl the traitor Sazanov. The squad leader interrupted her. You shouldn't call him like that. Why is it? My mother resented. It was your luck that Sazanov was there. What in the world are you saying? My mother screamed. The commander said calmly, Sazonov is not a traitor. He is a clandestine agent, and you owe your release to him. We understood everything. My mom said guiltily, and I cursed him so hard. Well, it's all right. Nothing to be sorry for, just said the commander. In the detachment, we also learned about the old woman who was tortured by the fascists, it was a partisan brigade commander's mother. Dressed as a beggar, she went to Rudensk to collect the necessary information about the German garrison. One traitor recognized her and informed the police. She was captured. We stayed in the squad. A few days later, we got the news that the agent Sazonov was captured and executed by the Nazis. My mother and I felt very sorry for him. Thank you for watching the video. It was Oleg and the Red Army channel. Please leave your comments and don't forget to put likes.